welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. Last time I showed how to debug an assembly language program, and this time I'd like to show you why I was trying to actually write that program in the first place. So what I did is, last time I was trying to write a program that allowed you to pass variables from AppleSoft into assembly language uh, using a call, uh, the call command. And this time I'd like to extend it a little bit further and show you a program I've been developing that uh, uses the ampersand routine uh, functionality built into AppleSoft. Um, and I got the idea for this routine from the Wizards Toolbox, which uh, was a set of utilities written by Roger Wagner Publishing, released in 1984. And this is a set of AppleSoft ampersand routines. And it'll let you do things like play sound um, or sort. Um, and since they're written in assembly language, they're very fast, but you can actually call them directly from AppleSoft and they look just like AppleSoft commands. So let me get started. I'll show you the code that I wrote and why I wrote it. Okay, so here we are. So what I'm working on is a port of the original Oregon Trail game, and this is the one from the mainframe from about 1975. Um, so I found some code online that Jeremy Maher had rescued. Um, and I just adapted that to AppleSoft, uh, which was actually pretty easy. It was already in BASIC, and it just needed some uh, minor tweaks, like the changing the random number generator. Um, but I'll go over that maybe in the next episode. Uh, the tricky part was actually the hunting. So in the original Oregon Trail, in order to hunt or if you get attacked by bandits, uh, what happens is you'd have to type the word bang as fast as you possibly could. So you can see here, I'll just type bang, and it tells me whether I did a good job or not. Um, the problem is, in AppleSoft Basic, there's no easy way to actually time how long it takes something to happen. So what I had to do is write a machine language program that actually would time how long it took me to type a word, and then return that uh, in that time in milliseconds. So I used the approach we took last time for calling out to a assembly language program from AppleSoft. And let's go take a look at the code right now that does that. Okay, so let's take a quick look at what the AppleSoft code looks like to call the routine. Uh, so I wrote a uh, assembly language program called TypeTime, and this is the program that measures how long it takes you to type a word. Um, so if we look at the uh, example AppleSoft code, um, what it does is it basically just uses a, uh, let's see, so we B-load our assembly language routine, that's the type time, and then we set up the ampersand uh, call for AppleSoft. And to do this, we just poke into locations 1014 and 1015, the address uh, where our assembly code is located. In this case, it's located at 300. And then, uh, as you can see in line 20, we just do ampersand, and then we can pass uh, any number of AppleSoft variables to our assembly code. So in this case we're passing a string called bang and then we're uh, getting out a return variable as an integer. Um, so if I run this, this is just my test code for the Oregon Trail game. Um, it'll say type bang, I type bang, and it tells me it took six, 1638 milliseconds uh, to type that. Uh, let's run it again and you can see if I misspell the word, uh, then I just return a default value of 32767. So the faster I type, the uh, obviously the faster uh, speed I get. Uh, there I got 872 milliseconds. So let's now switch gears and we'll look at the actual uh, assembly language code that produces this. And this is a combination of several routines uh, taken from both the wizard's toolbox and also from uh, assembly lines the complete book and let's load our program so it's called actually let's see we want to load read a text file and it's called type time and once that's loaded we can just go into the editor and we can take a look at it um, the easiest way to do this is maybe just to list the code so the code is divided up into several sections um, the first section is basically just a list of uh, uh, symbol definitions. So we're going to use many of the symbols that are in AppleSoft. Um, and you can find uh, a good reference for this is chapters 
16 and 17 in assembly lines. Um, this tells you how to pass variables back and forth between AppleSoft and assembly. Um, so let's see if we move on in the code. Uh, okay, so the first section here, lines 31 uh, through about 40, is just basically getting the string from AppleSoft. And this is kind of the same as the code we saw last time. So what we're doing is we're taking that string, and you remember from our test program it was just the string bang, um, and we're f calling various AppleSoft subroutines uh, just to make our job a lot easier. Um, so we get the string into assembly, and then we're going to store it in memory, and we'll store it starting at uh, location, uh, let's see it down at the bottom, we're storing it at data, comma, y. Um, and data, I think, is set to 3A0, so it's right after the end of our program. Um, so let's list 41 through 60. Um, uh, I did 4 through 60. Oh, well, that'll work. Um, so we're going to store the string in memory. And once we have the string in memory, then we can actually start timing the user. And this is pretty simple. We just have a counter set up um, at locations 6, 7, and 8. And we just start counting uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is line 56 um, through about 70, say. Um, and you can see, so we're incrementing position 6. Uh, if it doesn't wrap around, so that's that line 57, B and E skip, um, we just skip to the end where we actually check to see if the user has pressed a key. Um, if position 6 on uh, page 0 happens to wrap around, then we know that we've gone to 256, and we should increment then the next higher byte, which is at position 7. And again, we do the same thing. Uh, if that has not wrapped around, then we skip to see if the user pressed a key. Otherwise, we increment position 8. So this is actually, there's a limit to how much we can actually type. I think the limit is probably something maybe like 15 or 20 seconds or something like that. But that should be good enough for... Uh, anything we care about. Um, and then finally at the very end, um, so let's see, once we get to skip, that's when we're actually testing the keyboard. And you can see what we're doing is we're seeing, uh, did the user press a key? Uh, if they did press it, um, that's line 66. Um, if they did not press the key, then that's line 67. We do a BCC back to the time loop, and we just keep looping and looping and looping. Um, if they did press a key, uh, then starting in line 68, we first uh, clear the keyboard strobe, uh, print out the character, um, just using the AppleSoft see out routine. Um, and then from there, we can actually just go on and test to see did they press the correct key. And to do that, um, we just basically we look at our code uh, or our uh, data stored at location 3A0. Uh, so line 73, we compare what the user typed to uh, what is stored there. Um, if the wrong key was pressed, then we just jump back to the time loop and just keep counting. Um, however, if the correct key was pressed, then we're going to increment location 9. And location 9 is just a counter which uh, points to which key the user should currently be typing. So it'll just increment 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So for our case, B-A-N-G was our test uh, string. And if, so in other words, if the wrong key uh, was pressed, it will not increment that, and it'll always just keep pointing at the letter B um, at the beginning of the word bang. Um, but if you press the correct character, it'll increment that. It'll go back, um, back to the time loop and get the next character. Okay, and then finally, um, line 70, if the user hits carriage return, um, then it'll jump to the end. Um, and apologies if it's kind of, the focus is kind of going in or out on this thing. It looks like it's uh, having a hard time focusing on the screen itself. Uh, so hopefully it's readable. Um, so once the user's typed in the whole string and hit return, then all we need to do is see, well, first of all, we look at location 9, and then we look at um, 
the last character in our data position um, and we see does what's stored in location 9 um, if we read that um, using indexed addressing from the data area does that match a carriage return and if it does then that means that the user has successfully reached the end of the string and they typed all the characters correctly and we just jump to the finish uh, part of the program otherwise we're going to load um, our time, which is the 32767, um, although there's a slight tweak to that, which I'll get in a second. So now we're at the very end of the program, and let me just list the very end. I think it'll all fit on. Um, so the last thing we need to do, our, our timing code, our loop code, it turns out it's approximately um, four times faster than uh, we, let's see, four times faster than we need um, in milliseconds. So we need to basically take the number of clock cycles and multiply by four to get the actual time in milliseconds. And that's what lines 90 through uh, 95 do. They just advance through locations 6, 7, and 8 and then just shift left to multiply by uh, four. Um, and then finally, lines 96 through the end, uh, just use some code from chapter 17 of assembly lines uh, to pass an integer variable back to AppleSoft. Um, the other point I was going to mention with the, the, the bad value is we actually were taking, instead of 32,767, we're actually taking that divided by 4 because then when we shift it, we'll get back up to 32,767. So that's just like a little subtle point. Um, so basically, the, the parts of this code are read the string in from AppleSoft, time how long it takes the user to type a set of characters, uh, print out the characters as they're typing them, and then advance a pointer along the string. Um, and then finally, at the very end, we um, uh, multiply by four to get the correct time, and then we output the time uh, as an integer variable back to AppleSoft. And that's the whole program. And then, um, in the next part, I will show how I actually embedded this within uh, the Oregon Trail game itself inside the AppleSoft program so that I didn't have to actually load a separate uh, subroutine. So, thanks for watching.